Today on Built to Last. A lot of my colleagues work only at nuclear power plants. Powering up for jobs. They're not social workers, they're electricians. And support when it matters. Grab your tool belt, it's time for Built to Last. Built to Last is brought to you by the Chicago Regional Council of Carpenters Labor and Management Committee and Armstrong Ceilings. Faster, easier, better. Welcome to Built to Last, I'm Mark Nilsson. And I'm Monica Peterson. We're social distancing here at the Chicago Regional Council of Carpenters Apprenticeship and Training Center, where the union carpenters of tomorrow learn the skills they'll need to build the structures that keep our nation going. When you think about nuclear power plants, you don't often consider the skilled union workers required to operate and maintain them. But if you look closely, you'll see how union tradesmen and women play a key role and help provide our country with abundant carbon-free power. Our power needs have escalated. We're just spoiled, frankly. We turn it on and it's always there. That's the beauty of it. You don't think about it because it just works. Power is fundamental to our everyday living and we don't really appreciate it till it's not there. We generate power 24 seven at full power here at Byron Station. We are providing such a valuable asset, right? Something that, as a society, sometimes they just take for granted. There's a, a variety of power generations. I won't, I won't be able to cover all of them, but you know, certainly there's coal, uh, there's gas power, there's wind, there's solar, and biomass plants, and hydro plants, and uh, oil plants. There's nuclear power, which is a large part in Illinois. Now we have a total of six nuclear power plants here in Illinois, and uh, just four plants alone. Uh, offset to about 10 million cars on the road. If those plants were shut down, CO2 emissions would increase by over 70%. Exelon is really, really rigorous on their outage planning and preparations. You can go from LaSalle to Byron to Quad to to maybe Braidwood. So we have a pretty big workforce um, represented by the building trades in, in those areas. Here on site, we have two reactor units. Each reactor unit has a number of fuel assemblies in them. These fuel assemblies have uranium rods, and these rods are heated through the fission process. Fission is essentially a um, splitting of the atom, and when we do that, it generates a tremendous amount of heat. Then those generators produce steam, which drive our main turbine. From there, our main turbine is then connected to the electrical grid to distribute that electricity to our customer. Having that base load energy that's just there is, is what we are used to as a society and it's what we need. Right now is a unique situation where we have one of our units offline for a refueling outage, but our other unit, 100% generating power, maintaining a stability on the grid. We're at roughly around 4,700 consecutive days of generating power because when we shut down one reactor, the other reactor is still working. A nuclear power plant can't just be operating forever, right? We do have our fuel pellets that have to be uh, periodically changed out. And they'll deplete just in terms of their fission capability. We obviously refuel the reactor, but at the same time we're doing essential maintenance to ensure that the plant will run for another 18 months doing maintenance on all sorts of heat exchangers, a lot of uh, electric equipment, breakers, uh, transformers, and we have a tremendous union workforce that helps us out with that. We employ all of the local uh, building trades that uh, you know have work that's associated with the refueling outage. Carpenters, millwrights, pipe fitters, boilermakers, sheet metal workers, laborers, painters, insulators, iron workers, anybody that's represented by the North American Building Trades Unions. Our carpenters come with a, a scaffold builder's cart. They can't build scaffold without that cart. We sat down and we build safe quality scaffolds for the other trades to work on the equipment necessary to run operate the plant. Where do they get that cart? At the training center. So it's very, very important that we're working together with the unions uh, to ensure we've got qualified people going forward. Once it goes down, we'll pull that whole rotor out and they'll rebuild the whole generator inside there. So the whole floor will be filled with parts and guys cleaning them and inspecting them. Our target is typically to be offline for a refuel outage for about 16 to 20 days and then back up and running. So you're talking 18 months, you know, about 20 or so days, then back to 18 months of full power operations. 
After this at outage, we, go, we continue the next outage, go through the fleet of Exelon in Illinois. We have world records for refuel outages. We have world records for continuous generations. Uh, we hold the world record for a BWR light water reactor of 739 days. So we've had plants that have run two years continuously, supplying 100% power for the community with no interruption. That's one of the great uh, thoughts that people go through is when I flip my switch, that's when I need the power. And the reality is you have to have a constant supply of power. Nuclear power plants really supply that uh, and are a key allocation for that because they supply power 24-7, seven, seven days a week, 365 days a year, they're there. And uh, it's because of that reliability and resiliency that they're really key for us. So we rely heavily on the men and women from the building trades that come in to support our outages. Here at Dresden, it could be up to 160, 165 electricians at any given time. It's an amazing career. Not only do we get to experience and work on different things from daily to monthly, we travel to different plants. We know that they come with a certain set of skills and knowledge that's required to perform maintenance at the facilities. The people that we bring in know how to maintain these plants. They, they do it with a great precision and the equipment runs very, very reliably. We want the plant to stay open, not just for the tax revenue, but for the impact on our families, the impact on our community. At Armstrong Ceiling and Wall Solutions, we take great pride in making a positive difference in the lives of people. With the broadest portfolio in the industry and the technical performance to back it up, you can design and install with confidence. Our ceiling construction expertise, training, and pre-engineered ceiling solutions make it easy for you to seamlessly transition from one end of the building to the other. Improve construction efficiencies and keep every job on time, on budget, and on the mark with Armstrong Ceiling and Wall Solutions. Faster, easier, better. Want a great career? Join the Carpenters Union and be part of the next generation building our communities. With the Carpenters Union Career Connections Program, high school students get a head start on the industry's leading curriculum. Learn the latest in construction technology and the many skilled crafts that Carpenters Union represents. Plus, earn as you learn. Receive a nice paycheck, health insurance benefits, and best of all, no college debt. Ask your school district to participate in the Career Connections Program and get started on your future. From bridges and trains to iconic high-rises, have you ever wondered who's powering Chicago? Power Unlike our sports heroes, they go unnoticed. Yet they proudly keep our businesses, homes, and great city running. IBEW Local 134 electricians and the electrical contractors have the experience, training, and reliability to keep Chicago open for business. The Dresden and Byron nuclear power plants located in Northern Illinois are essential pieces of the local economies. Not only do they provide enough carbon-free energy for millions of households, they also provide thousands of jobs. And during annual refueling outages, thousands of additional union tradesmen and women are brought into work. The Dresden station has been thought of as the lifeline of our school district for a long time. We've had a very, very positive relationship with Exelon officials. We vary between 2,100 kids and 2,200 kids. We're a pre-K through 12 school district. Our total budget's, uh, you know, about $35 million. We receive $16 million a year in property tax revenue uh, from our tax agreement with the Dresden station. Our school board has been planning for a long time, knowing that in 2029, uh, the license extension for Unit 2 at Dresden expires, and in 2031, the uh, license extension for Unit 3 expires. What we weren't prepared for was the announcement that it could close in November of 21. That's a gigantic hit to our school district. We offer a lot of great things for our kids, um, and a lot of those things would have to go away. There's many, many features of a nuclear power plant that uh, you know the public just doesn't think about. Over the years, we've invested a tremendous amount in these plants. Uh, we added features to nuclear power plants that other sources of generation just never had to consider. That's one thing that adds to our cost, quite frankly. We know that there have been struggles with uh, the marketplace and how it impacts nuclear, so we were prepared for that. There's a lot of talk in the past about carbon pricing and the value of carbon. It is a zero carbon emission plant. For example, just you know, four of our nuclear power plants here in Illinois uh, offset about 10 million cars on the road. 
We know that the prices have been eroded at these power plants for a variety of reasons. Um, largely, we believe that the power plants are not recognized for the value that they provide. Uh, they're, they're not treated as uh, you know, essentially zero carbon. We've been making plans, but we haven't accelerated the plans to the point of being ready for a closure next year. Unfortunately for that, you know, not being compensated for a lot of the cost that's additive for a nuclear power plant, um, you know, it's just to the point where unfortunately we've had to make the decision that uh, we'll have to shut them down to, to maintain the rest of the company. We hired Northern Illinois University and they did an economic impact study and the results were almost 15% of our GDP is coming from the station. Once the announcement was made about the shutdown that a lot of the local businesses, they've really rallied around this plant and what it means to them and keeping it open. Just stop and think about a thousand people coming to a plant, renting hotel rooms, B&Bs, apartments, going to the gas station, going to the restaurant. It's a huge impact. They're shopping in our downtowns where we are today, using our healthcare facilities. So it's not just about 800 jobs, it's about all the secondary jobs. It's a lot bigger picture than just one plant. We want the plant to stay open. Our community is gonna fundamentally change if that plant closes. It supports our economy. We've got uh, tons of people who work here. Uh, it would be a travesty to see it go. Talk about tax dollars a lot, but they brought many other things to our community. Number one, they brought quality jobs, first of all. Our kids directly benefit from that. And those quality jobs with health care benefits and retirement benefits that mean our kids come to school ready to learn. If they shut through these plants down, it's a big, big, will be a tremendous impact on the nuclear carpenters for that aspect. It's gonna be a big void in our work. If Dresden were to close, that's thousands of people that are out of work that rely on this outage every year to feed their families. A lot of my colleagues work only at nuclear power plants. Exxon gives so much back to the community. They have done a really nice job of volunteering in our community. You know, they've come and volunteered in our science classes. We have a beautiful performing arts center. They've sponsored concerts that we've brought there. I think our relationship has been very, very positive. I can tell you as a company, we believe in nuclear power. We're the best operating nuclear uh, operator in the world, in my opinion, and uh, the data shows that. The real path is uh, yeah, probably legislative action, that's correct, either, either on a state or a national level. Illinois has the opportunity to meet its clean energy goals through energy policy that is both practical and reasonable, and at the same time, preserve thousands of carbon-free jobs. We know Dresden's not gonna be there forever, but the legislature and the community and the state believe in clean energy. There's a role for it to play right now, and there's a way that it can help us get to our clean energy goals in the interim. I'm hopeful people are gonna see that. Um, I'm thankful for everybody raising the awareness, doing things like this, and um, we're keeping our fingers crossed. To learn more about nuclear power and what you can do to help preserve carbon-free energy in Illinois, visit nuclearpowersillinois.com forward slash join. Opened in 1960, the Dresden Nuclear Power Station was the first privately funded nuclear plant in the U.S. The original reactor was retired in 1978. Two additional reactors went online in 1970 and 71 and are still operating today learning the processes of getting in college, staying in college, parking passes. We've, we've never done any of that. Keeping restaurants and hotels up to date with the latest design trends is a constant challenge. Finding qualified contractors isn't at finishingchicago.com. We work with top designers and general contractors who use the latest painting, drywall finishing, and wall covering techniques in Chicagoland's premier hotels and restaurants. The hospitality industry relies on finishingchicago.com as its free resource to find quality finishing contractors. For a great finish, start with finishingchicago.com. 24-7 IBEW Local 9 linemen are there protecting you and your family from the moment you wake up with the power in your home, on your way to work, lighting the way and easing congestion, plus keeping you safe with traffic lights and cameras. So the next time you're at a stoplight, pass under a power line, or just pull into your brightly lit neighborhood. Think of your friends at IBEW Local 9. We'll continue to light the way for you. Meet us online at IBEW9.org. 
Got a commercial, industrial, or healthcare construction project? Use a professional Flooring Installers Association Install Certified Contractor. Flooring must be skillfully installed so it looks great and lasts. PFIA skilled union installers receive industry leading training, including ICRA, to deliver quality and safety with any flooring product. PFIA contractors are the single source for all of your flooring needs. Flooring done right. The Professional Flooring Installers Association. A career in the trades comes with competitive pay and good benefits. This means a lot to skilled union members starting their careers and possibly even new families. As these families grow, so does the rapidly rising cost of college. Layuna, the laborers union, understands this and is right there ready to assist. My name is Eric Farr. I'm a member of uh, Labor Local 4 in Chicago. I'm a concrete laborer, um, so I'm either shoveling, raking, or breaking concrete. My dad uh, has always worked. He's always worked really hard. I've been with the union for right out of high school. Always enjoyed all my jobs, always very prideful. Um, always enjoyed everybody I worked around, all the guys I worked with, all the men and women. We drive through Chicago and you need to just hear the stories of the people he works with, for him to point out like which building and say, I, I did this there, I did this there. I was raking, uh, raking the cement. Something just went bad in my lower back and I knew it wasn't right. Construction business is a dangerous business. You're, you're all over the place. You might be a flagger, you might be in a trench, you might be uh, taking down a wall. Construction work can be dangerous. Union workers are better trained and have a collective voice to speak up about unsafe working conditions. Survivor's benefits are taken out at the age of 19 now. So you can get Social Security, but you're not gonna get survivor's benefits. The average person is graduates from high school, maybe 18 years old, possibly 19. Where does that leave them? Workers are not perfect or immune from tragedies, but should they be involved in one, there are programs like the Lessett Scholarship to help out those in need. It's so important to me that labor and management talk about all these things. Much rather be on the job with the guys right now. Lessett is a cooperative management labor committee, and we do uh, a lot of work to promote the organized uh, construction industry. Lessett administers programs designed to benefit both union signatory contractors and LIUNA members alike. Once we ran out of the um, insurance for hours work, um, they guided us in all the right directions to the programs that the union has to offer to help supplement and help families out. And uh, they didn't skip a beat. If you went through a budget, and you look what it costs for this, what it costs for a telephone, what it costs for, 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 for uh, your gas, electricity, and all this. At the end of the day, you don't have much left. With everything going on, we, we, didn't, we needed to do our best not to let the kids down. I'm the first one in my family to be able to go to college and to pursue a degree. We, we were having conversations with Haley about college and what she wanted to do and where she wanted to go. I was a counselor at uh, a camp for children with cases of neglect and abuse and I met some amazing kids and I knew that I wanted to do more. Figuring out, you know, how you navigate getting in college, staying in college, parking passes, we've, we've never done any of that. Most times people pull out because they don't have the money or the resources. We had a budget differently, we had to, we had to walk through life differently. What is the thing that's going to catapult them into college? With Lessed, in 07, we started discussing this, and we just put it together. Lessed offers a scholarship that supports the children of both union and management members killed or permanently disabled on the job. As their children reach college age, they become eligible to apply for Lessed Scholarship. A successful applicant is awarded $5,000 per academic year to help with the expenses of higher education at any accredited college or vocational institution. And if the student remains in good standing, they could reapply yearly, up to four years. We received a letter in the mail for uh, uh, disabled retiree benefits. My parents kept bugging me, like, you need to fill this out, this would be a great opportunity. And you know, of course, I. I always call my hall and ask questions. And they told him like, yeah, she should, she should definitely apply for it. We do publicize uh, the scholarship is available in a lot of our bulletins. Uh, a lot of the different locals know about it. The different contractors know about it. Went online, filled everything out, wrote an essay about um, 
what I'm doing in college, what I know about the union, why the union is so important in my family. My dad has always shown us to be proud of what you do um, and to just do good work and work hard while you're doing it. Prior to us receiving the letter in the mail and then her getting accepted after she wrote her speech, she had just gotten on the dean's list. So it was really good. It was like a major reward. It took a tremendous amount of debt off of my bill, um, which is amazing because I'm planning on getting married next September. I don't like to ask for help. I mean, I think everybody's pretty prideful. If you're a working man or woman, you, you like to do everything on your own. You have to learn to ask for help. This is one more thing we can do to help any unforeseen things that might happen to a person on the job site. When you can show support and they've gone over there in a group. And just to see everybody come uh, with, you know, with open arms and say, hey, we're here for you, we'll do whatever it takes. When you have a plumbing emergency, you want it fixed fast and done right. Plumbers 911 connects you with a highly experienced plumber in five minutes or less. That's our five minute promise. All our plumbers are highly trained, background checked, licensed and insured. So your job will be done right the first time. Our phones are open 24 seven to solve your plumbing problem day or night. Call 1-833-PLUM-911. Plumbers 911, your plumbing connection. We are DeWalt. We're the ones who grind it out. The ones using materials from all over the world to build the things that build America right here in America. And there's no place we'd rather be. Land of the free, tools of the brave. This is a team. It's made up of different players, positions, skills, talented, sure, but on their own. Because every team needs a coach, someone who makes things work together. That's how less it works. We're coaches in the construction industry, bringing together laborers and management, unions and contractor associations. Our work leads to safer, stronger construction, which is a win for us all. Union members often refer to their colleagues as brothers and sisters. That's because their relationships go far beyond working side by side. That's why the electricians of IBEW Local 134 set up a program that provides support to its members in their darkest times. I'm a uh, Local 134 member and um, a dear friend of Tony Kazor and his family. Why is this happening to her? I would do anything for for to take take it out of her and give it to myself. It was really tough. It was tough on the entire family. It was the most painful, gutting thing I could ever imagine. The story is a sad one. And it, in 2016, Tony's wife, Jennifer, um, she, she passed suddenly having to find daycare and everything that Jennifer did as mother, as wife, as friend, right, that was all gone very suddenly. Rogue, Carrie and Amy, my three children, lived with their mom, my wife, Anne. They lived in Ireland and while I remained in Chicago because I could find more lucrative work here than I could over there, you know, any day of the week. My good son, Rogue, uh, when he was 13, decided to leave this world. In uh, 2015, her doctor said that uh, he believes that she has leukemia. I was immediately sent to the hospital with Lily um, for almost a month, sleeping by her side, watching tests and procedures and medications that made her very sick and nauseous. He was given some financial help that the Helping Hand Fund gave when his wife passed. And then unfortunately and unimaginably, two years later, he loses his fight with kidney cancer. And, um, and once again, the Helping Hand Fund was able to come through. The IBW Local 134 Helping Hand Fund, we help out current and retired members of Local 134 uh, in their time of need. 
they uh, came up with the bulk of this money to get me overseas, and uh, I'm very, very thankful to them. The Helping Hand Fund has done more than just drop a check at someone's house. You know, th that's all fine and well and great, but when you can show support and they've gone over there in a group. It meant a lot, and to, just to see everybody come uh, with, you know, with open arms and say, hey, we're here for you, we'll do whatever it takes, you know, it's a beautiful feeling. The, the amount of work that the board from the Helping Hand puts into, it's always done, it's done behind the scenes, and it's done, I mean, it's done for the right reasons. Do it for the brothers and the sisters out there that are hurting, and they need help. Established in 2011 by a financial donation from then business manager Terry Allen, the IBEW Local 134 Helping Hand Fund started out modest but meaningful. Well, the Helping Hand Fund initially started uh, just as a gift card. We'd send out jewel gift cards to people that were on the out of work list. As we progressed as a group, we realized that people needed more assistance. There was a union meeting October of 2011. Terry was going to talk to the members, explain to them anybody that gave towards the Helping Hand Fund, they will walk out of the union meeting with a, a case or two of Guinness beer. And that night alone, we raised around $7,500. That's when the group, you know, was restructured and started real fundraising. We were able to buy some t-shirts to try to make more profit. We were able to put a deposit down for our first benefit that we wound up having in April. Not being able to get together in a large group has really hampered uh, fundraising for the group. Parking Chicago is the labor management cooperative between IBW Local 134 and Electrical Contractors Association. Our contractors go above and beyond by donating most times of their own free will. And so this is something that we understand is more important than just helping out one another being a brotherhood and sisterhood, but even the collaborative that we have with our contractors in making sure that those members who work for them are taken care of. So Powering Chicago has donated $50,000 to this particular fund. Danny and I are trying to instill in our girls to learn how to give back because when we were at our lowest point, the Helping Hand Fund showed us what that all means. Everywhere I go, I said, how's Lily? How's the family? How are you guys doing? You know, and it's, and it never stops and it's awesome. Very proud of her. She fought the fight and she, she beat it. You know, she won. It's the brothers and sisters of 134. Uh, working together to help the brothers and sisters of 134. When our members are struck down, we hold them up. 134 a Helping Hand looks out for our members, and personally, I think there should be more of that in the world in general. That's all for this episode of Built to Last. Be sure to check us out on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. You know, Monica, I find that my confidence always goes up after doing some carpentry. Really? Yep. I'm really proud of my shelf. Aw. Like a bookshelf. <laughs> I, your shelf. I'm proud of your shelf, too. We'll see you next time.